you said yourself that most of the love stories told in Hollywood are just bullshit, and, and certainly <laughs> the, the kind of they meet, they they montage, they marry t- seems to be the, the general pattern of it. Yeah. And here you, you, you and your uh, and your uh, and Mark and, and Zoe try to set out the idea that the eternal sunshine of love doesn't necessarily shine on forever. Mm-hmm. And I don't know whether coming out of a movie like this you it changes your attitude about love itself, or whether you kind of feel, you know, you knew going in that it is a, a murky, unpredictable world. Uh, yeah, I, I think that I knew it was a murky, unpredictable world. Um, and I certainly knew that love doesn't feel much like what's shown in Hollywood movies. Um, it's just more complicated than that. And, um, and that's why I think when people see this movie, they're actually really feeling something and, um, and it's making them laugh harder and cry harder and, and feel more than, than your average you know, Hollywood romance that's sort of selling you a false bill of goods and trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I know I've had a, a relationship in the past, a, a very like uh, Summers, and I, I wondered, you know, whether there is a moral here. I, I'm kind of thinking what I learned from it is that really hot chicks have no feelings, really. I think that's, that's the main <laughs> that message, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say so, no. <laughs> but that idea, too, it's a really positive review. I know I got a, a standing ovation on the festival circuit oh. and 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. But there, as much as it breaks cliches, there's always going to be a certain amount of playing into what people, are, especially in recent cinema, kind of know, like the, uh, the very, very cute kind of pixie manic girlfriend, the kooky supporting characters, the cinematic, cinematic mixtape of lo-fi pop and all that. I mean, there is a certain degree, even though it does play with the time and, and it plays with uh, a lot of the cliches, in a way, you've really got to play into also a, a kind of current idea that, uh, in cinema. Well, I, I think that it's... Uh any originality is a balance of tradition and rebellion and repetition and deviation. And um, what I can safely say about 500 Days of Summer is that it's honest. And to me, that's way more important than being quote-unquote original. I don't think anything's entirely original. Every, everything has its influences. What matters is if you're honest. Um, and uh, this is... A story that was told by people who cared about it, and of course we we, you know, we were standing on traditions, and of course we're influenced by, you know, past films. And why shouldn't we be? If if you made an entirely original film, it'd be incomprehensible. Um, and and Five Hundred Days of Summer is about those conventions and those sort of cliches. Tom, the character that I play, has a mind that's sort of been formed by pop songs and love love stories. And and maybe he's bought into those cliches a little too much. And maybe um, he's projecting them onto this girl that now he sort of deifies. And, um, and the movie's from his point of view. So it absolutely deals in those conventions. Um, and it bats them around a little bit and plays with them. But they're not absent. No, the conventions are there. And... Um, they're just they're they're there to be examined, not to be um, not to be taken for granted. I was looking over your CV, and you've had a, you've had a great run of movies since since leaving Thirty Rock, especially with recent things like Mysterious Skin, and then also Stop Loss, and and uh, it, and, and that idea too that you, they're generally all very very well received critically, Brick and, and so forth. And then we get to G.I. Joe, mm-hmm. which is a sort of movie that that the critics really weren't ever going to like. Mm-hmm. 170 million dollar movie actually does business despite all the critical mauling. I mean, what, what, part of your thinking is that like a little bit of credit in the bank with Hollywood is a sense of, oh, I'd like to try this kind of movie for a change, this kind of character, or? Yeah, it was really just fun. I liked the costume and the mask. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it, yeah, because a lot of people have said just what you said, like, oh, so you did it, you know, a commercial movie for the money and all. And, um, not at all. Uh, it, but the opportunity to get to sit, I mean, I know it sounds tedious, but, and it was, but four hours of makeup every day done by this makeup artist named Kazuhiro Tsuji, who's the protege of Rick Baker, who is the guy who, he's the guy who, mm. you know, is responsible for Hollywood makeup as we know it, you know. Um, and, you know, what I get off on as an actor is being someone other than myself. So when I can look in the mirror and see something entirely different from me, that's exciting, and uh, that's what G.I. Joe was about, and it was really, really fun. And you know what? It's, it's fun to watch. It's, it's a fun movie to see. 
Rock and roll. I'll be giving the friendly finger. Yeah. Nice to talk to you, Thanks, son. Sir. Yeah, it always goes a little bit too fast. Right about 